everybody. This is Nathan Donnelly with Northwest Resilience and uh, I wanted to do a review of the sleeping bag that I took with me on Alone Season 6. I have a love-hate relationship with this item more than any other thing I brought out with me. It is the Mountain Hardware Lamina Z negative 30 degree Fahrenheit sleeping bag. I had a lot, a lot, a lot of issues with this sleeping bag and I wanted to go through them because uh, while I have a special relationship with this particular sleeping bag, I don't think anybody else should have to go through what I went through for it. It comes um, in a pretty good storage bag. I was actually really happy with this storage bag. The very first thing that I had a problem with, with it was the stuff sack. It came with a compression bag made by Mountain Hardware, supposedly. One of the straps for the compression bag, as I was stuffing the bag still, ripped right off. That was an omen of things to come for this sleeping bag, whom I've named Patience, because of all the ordeals I had with her. This sleeping bag is synthetic. It weighs probably over four pounds, and I would never get this for any kind of a mountaineering or backpacking situation. So you can see this is a very broad sleeping bag. That's what I wanted. The problems arose with this sleeping bag as soon as I started using it though. And most of the problem, both of the problems boil down to two things. The design of this zipper and the warmth of the bag overall. I did not find this bag to be rated at negative 30 degrees. I'm a very warm sleeper. That is up until I had the experience with this. Um, there's a few things that come into play with that. I was not eating three big square meals a day on the Alone Show. It just doesn't happen out there. Survival situations often mean lack of food. And that means your metabolism is running slower. That means you're not gonna sleep as warm at night. Uh, another thing that I tried to take but I just could not fit it into my 10 items was this sleeping pad here. This is a closed cell foam ridge rest. They are not as compact as some of the inflatable ones, but this will never pop. I can stab this 100 times with a knife. It'll keep me exactly as warm as it did before I'd done that. Um, I have used all the inflatable sleeping pads and I have flattened every single one of them. Keeping you from the cold, wet ground at night uh, is keeping you from the number one killer of outdoors people and that's hypothermia. So if you don't have that system working properly, then you have a problem. And I had problems on Alone Season 6. The sleeping bag I found um, not even a couple of weeks in was not keeping me warm as it should have. And that was when it was still probably 20 degrees above zero. This bag is rated 50 degrees colder than that. That's pretty much what temperatures I thought I'd be going into, and uh, it wasn't adequate for my needs. So, Patience and I had quite a few arguments while we were out, and they almost all revolved around this issue right here. This zipper is the stickiest zipper in the world. That's about the furthest I've ever been able to zip it without getting stuck before it gets caught in something again. From inside the bag, it can take me a full minute or two to deal with this zipper. A big part of the problem with this bag, which I'll get into it here in a second and show you, is this last little part, because this is such a thick bag. It's got nine and a half inches of loft when it's brand new. When you start getting into, the, into walls that are over four inches thick, and this is, this is lofted to nine and a half inches when it's full, the zipper has to make bigger corners around the shoulder. It's not the same geometry as it would be for a normal backpacking weight bag. And I don't think that the engineers took that into account. And I'm fairly certain nobody took this sleeping bag out into negative 30 degree temperatures and tested it before it was marketed to you know millions of people. I have a problem with that. I have a real severe problem with that because this is one of the most important pieces of safety equipment that a mountaineer or an explorer is gonna go out with. You don't have opportunities to test it out in negative 30 degree weather before you go out on your in your trip. Mountain Hardware has made a lot of great stuff that I've owned, 
I've never had problems with their stuff. I know their stuff has been to the top of Mount Everest. This did not get the same amount of rigor put into it as what Ed Veesters goes up and climbs Mount Everest in. And because of that, I had weeks and months of very cold, uncomfortable sleep with my feet going numb and all kinds of problems. So I'm gonna get in this bag and kind of show you what I mean. One of the things that I had done is there's a piece of ribbon sewn in here to try and keep the zipper from getting, uh, the fabric from getting stuck in the zipper. And it was really inadequate. But what I did was actually cut a hole in the top of the ribbing there so I could feed birch twigs through it to stiffen up the zipper so that it didn't have all these crenulations and wrinkles in it. It improved the situation a little bit, but after a few nights, the twigs would dry out and crack, and snap or freeze or whatever. The shelter that I had built to do this thing was only about this tall, so I had to do all this stuff while I was sleeping inside of a basically a casket. It meant I couldn't sit up the way I am right now to reach down to the zipper. It just had to work properly without all this extra futzing that I'm having to do right now. If you go onto the Mountain Hardware website, you'll see the reviews. Pretty much the only complaint people have about this bag is the zipper getting caught. So that's another thing that's like, come on Mountain Hardware, you've had hundreds of people in your reviews say your zipper junk and they're still selling it without that problem. I'm already caught right here. Trying to do this with gloves on or mittens on, which is a requirement in these conditions. One of the nights I was out was so cold that touching the nylon in this bag was like touching a block of dry ice. If you did it with your bare hands, your hands were instantly freezing. I don't mean cold, I mean actually freezing. But um, as far as the fabric, I thought it was good, it was durable. I thought that the insulation was fine. They double insulate the foot pocket on these things to about here. So unless you're actually six and a half feet tall, your feet are not going to be in the most insulated part of the bag. It was unfortunate. This thing, this, this was my biggest frustration of all the gear I brought out was patience. I cannot recommend buying this sleeping bag. Let me show you some of the damage that was incurred from the fire. I had to get out and uh, just barely salvaged my sleeping bag so it would keep me alive that night. It was a pretty burly, burly experience. I don't know that the sleeping bag is ever going to be <laughs> usable again, but I, I think I might try to patch it up and throw some nylon over it and use it as a car camping bag or something. Yeah, this bag was, was, um, was what I needed to learn patience. And uh, I had a lot of very frustrating moments. Just decide to go with what I had and not get frustrated. Um, frustration is a luxury you do not have in a survival situation. And if you can't keep everything up here together, that doesn't mean that you're in a happy, you know, go lucky mood all the time, but it does mean that you're taking responsibility for your own attitude. This thing taught me how to do that better. So there was, there was some good that came out of it. It is the sleeping bag that kept me alive for two and a half months. So I thank it for that. When I got home and ordered a couple of sleeping bags that were on sale, I got this summer weight marmot bag and a winter weight zero degree marmot bag. And this thing is awesome. It will not get jammed on itself. It just works really smooth. All they did was put a little plastic housing around a regular YKK zipper and it works as smooth as butter. And the zero degree bag that I have from them is exactly the same way. So um, Marmot, I'm really happy with both of the bags I bought. I haven't had them for months and spent dozens of nights in each one to do a gear review on these, but maybe in the next year or two, I'll, um, I'll have enough experience with these bags to feel competent enough to do a gear review on them. But uh, that's what Mountain Hardware needs to do to their zippers. So um, that wraps it up for my sleeping bag experience on Alone and um, if you like the content that we're producing, please hit like and subscribe and I'll keep on putting out more uh, gear reviews and particularly more survival disaster preparedness videos um, that are more skills based. And I'll see you next time.